Does this give the Fed more reason to hold rates here? Our next guest uh, ex expects five cuts this year. Goldman Sachs chief economist Jan Hatzius is with us at Post 9, as he does on Jobs Friday. It's great to have you back, Jan. Happy Friday. It's great to be here. Um, two things. Market is sort of looking at maybe a somewhat muted uh, reaction relative to the print, and the word wonky is getting tossed around a lot. Is that fair? I think the muted reaction relative to the print makes sense. I mean, 353 on the surface, of course, is a blockbuster number, but January is a very difficult month to seasonally adjust. There are a lot of seasonal layoffs. Unadjusted payrolls in January are always down a ton. So when you have low, relatively low layoffs, and we know that from the jobless claims numbers, from a, from a bunch of other indicators, then you can get some very strong numbers. I would say, a year ago, you know, we had a very strong January jobs report as well, I think partly for similar reasons. Now, it is a very strong labor market. Labor market's doing, doing great. The unemployment rate's 3.7 percent. It's been in that range for, for a long time. But I don't think it's quite as strong as the payroll number suggests. Does hours worked offset some of the strength in, in, in wages? Well, hours worked, I think, in addition to, you know, maybe whatever else is going on with hours worked, also saw a negative impact from the weather, from the snowstorms during the survey week. So I think that's another distortion that cuts in the other direction. But it then, in turn, just to make it even more complicated, <laughs> probably boosted average hourly earnings growth because earnings are calculated as the wage bill divided by hours worked. And if hours worked are sort of spuriously low, then that's going to give you a big number. But so it is all very wonky. Yes. Uh, in, <laughs> coming back to your second question. But still, with back to back jobs numbers above 300,000 and wage growth ticking up to four and a half percent year over year, doesn't that justify the Fed's patience? Well, it certainly uh, uh, reinforces what uh, Chair Powell said in the Wednesday press conference that March is, uh, you know, unlikely. And, you know, prior to this report, markets were still assigning a reasonably high probability, sort of 30 to 40 percent to a March cut. But that has come down, and I think that's very appropriate. And you, had, and you changed your forecast when you heard Powell kind of rule out March, right? You were expecting the, a cut in March. Yes, on the, on the comment that he was going to that, that, that March was unlikely. Do I mean, you think it would be a mis Do you think it's a mistake that March is unlikely? Uh, no, I think cuts are somewhat optional. The economy is doing well. The reasons for the reason for cuts is really that inflation is moving back to the target. It's probably going to be quite close to the target by the time the first cut occurs. If that's say in May, we won't be that far away from from two percent, even on a year-on-year -year number or on a year-on-year -year basis. So I think it is fine to wait a little bit longer. So you, you think inflation still goes down to 2 percent, even with very strong job market and decent wage growth? I do, yes. And the wage numbers, I do think there's deceleration in wages. I suspect we're going to find that today's number was an outlier, maybe an outlier driven by some, some you know, maybe more spurious weather-related factors. I would put more weight on the employment cost index that we got on Wednesday, yeah. which showed a deceleration, though admittedly for the fourth quarter, not for the first quarter. Three very quick questions. Is there upside bias to your Q1 GDP 2.8? Well, I think yes. The, probably, uh, if you just look at what's happened to the GDP numbers recently, that could drift higher. I would make one caveat, though, which is that gross domestic income which is another way of getting at GDP, has been running quite a bit weaker recently. So I would also keep that in mind, that GDP has been very, very strong the last several quarters, and, but maybe output isn't growing quite as quickly as that.